Hi everyone, today I'm going to be going over my solution for Advent of Code Day 3, written in Python. I'll be doing a bit of a walkthrough of the solution, how I came to it, and then going over the code itself. Yeah, let's get into it. So Day 3 involves inputs that sort of look like this, and this is an engine schematic. Or each one of these, you can sort of think of this as like a, a, a 2D plane. Um, where each one of these numbers um, is, quote, a part number if it's next to a symbol. Where a symbol is, we sort of got three things in this, this diagram. Numbers, just like this. Symbols, which is anything other than a period. And then just the periods, which are sort of just like empty space. Um, and these numbers are part numbers if they're next to a symbol. And that's next to meaning could be like right next to or like on the same line like here above or below like we have here and so we're thinking of this as like a whole 633 as a one big number so that's 633 being next to the symbol not just the six it could also be diagonal so here we have 467 is diagonally next to um this symbol here and so yeah i think the what we want to get is just the sum of the part numbers. So for example, in this diagram, all these are part numbers except for a few, such as 58 um, and 144, because these parts, these numbers are not adjacent to any symbols. So for example, 144, it's close to this, but it's actually not directly diagonal. Diagonal would be here. Similarly, 58, um, it's got like a, a space in between it and the nearest part. So yeah. There are multiple ways to solve this, but most simply is just um, going through the input, finding each number, and then for the number, checking all of the, the places around it to see if there's a symbol in it. If there is, we count it as a part and add it to a running total, which we then return at the end. Let's look at the code for this. So my code, um, is a little bit more messy because it has parts one and two um, in the same function, but I can sort of talk talk us through. Um, so we're just first getting the lines, um, which is quite straightforward. Um, just reading that from a, a file. Then here, what I do is basically take the lines and around them pad a period on every corner. What that does is it means that when we have numbers that are on the borders, such as here, if we don't do this, we're going to have to do some like boundary checking when we look for the symbols. Like if we're at like row zero, don't look above. But if we just like pad out with a layer of periods, then we don't have to check that. So it just makes things a little easier, I think. Then create this variable to track the running total of the part numbers. Um, then create two additional vi um, variables, which we'll need. Since this is just, I mean, the input itself is a list of strings. We're thinking of it as sort of a 2D plane and like closeness, but we have to iterate through this list of, of, of strings. And what I'm doing is I have this Boolean value, so we're, we're sort of iterating through the first rows, um, then lines, so like this. And this in number says that when, as we're iterating through, are we like currently looking at a number? So like yes, 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 no. And so when we get to a no, then we know that this is a number, where we store the column of the start of the number in number call. Here's, that's for part two. We'll explain it in a little bit. So we basically go through the lines and then each character on the line. And essentially, if um, the character using this is numeric method, so that'll return true if we're inside of these numbers, um, we can update the number, um, this sort of variable, which we're using to track the number as we go. Um, and by multiplying by 10 and then adding the current the, the character the current digit that'll sort of increase so initially it'll be 4 then we multiply by 10 and add 6 46 then multiply by 10 and add 7 for 467 
that'll sort of build up our numbers as we iterate through. If we're not, um, and then this sort of updates, if we don't already have it set that we're inside of a number, we can uh, set these values. Otherwise, if character is not numeric, so we're looking at either one of these periods or a symbol, then um, we additionally check for this in number condition. So basically, if we're looking at a symbol but in number is true, that means we just ended looking at a number. Um, and so in that case, we want to check for the number we just ended looking at in the surrounding area if there are any symbols. So then we call this find symbol method. Um, we can step into that. It's quite simple. It just looks around um, the, uh, the number. So we pass in like the row and then start an end column index of the numbers and just check surrounding it if there are any symbols. Pretty straightforward. Um, what's notable maybe is that we actually return um, not a Boolean value, but the row and column index of the symbol. For part one, we can sort of just think of this as a Boolean value, but where we return something if there's a symbol and none otherwise. But for part two, we will actually use those row and column indices. So going back, if we did find a symbol, then we can add to our total with the part number. Um, this is all part two stuff. Don't worry about it for now. And then we just set, reset these two variables so we can pick up the next number as we go. And yeah, it's quite pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, maybe some struggle implementing that, but actual solution is pretty straightforward to get to. And we just can return that part one total. Part two adds a little bit of a wrinkle where we have, we're thinking now of this, the asterisk as a gear. And so instead of caring about all these other symbols, we just care about gears. And so what we think, what we want to find is for each of these gears, each of the asterisks, which of them have at least two numbers touching them, or sorry, exactly two numbers touching them. So for example, this one does, has this and this. This one does not, only has one number. And this one does have exactly two. So these are the two situations we, excuse me, we care about. So now we're concerned with something called, that they call the gear ratio, which is the, the, the product of the two numbers that um, are adjacent to the gear. And essentially what we want for the solution is just for each gear that has exactly two numbers, just multiply those two together and then sum over all the valid years. So what we're gonna do is we have to add a little bit to the loop um, just to keep track of the gears. So we could think about maybe a couple ways of doing this. One would be instead of searching for the numbers, searching for the gears um, and then looking for the numbers that surround each gear. That could work, but given the solution we already have would be mean sort of totally re-implementing um, everything. Instead, whenever we get to a number and check um, for a symbol, we can check if that symbol is a gear. And if it is a gear, then we can maintain this extra data structure where for each gear, we track how many numbers surrounds it and their product. So let's look at how we implement, implemented that. Yeah, so we've got for this, for part two, we introduced this, this data structure called gears, which um, I've implemented just using a Python dictionary, indexed by this tuple of the row and column of the gear, and then with its value as this other tuple that has the count, so the number of gears that, the number of numbers that surround this gear, and then the ratio, which is just the product of all the numbers. So, yeah. Um, now we can look at like the areas that's changed for part two, which is this, mainly this statement here. So remember that symbol is not just a Boolean value, but contains the, the row and column index of the symbol itself. So here we just check if that symbol is a year. And if so, 
we just update our uh, gear data structure where if we already have information on this gear, if it's already in the dictionary, then we can increment the count and increase the ratio by um, multiplying by the, the number. If it's not in the data structure, we can just set up this value where we have the count as one and the, the initial ratio is just the number. Then when um, we wanna sum up the gear ratios for all valid gears, we just have this short statement here where we look through um, the count and ratio of each one of these gears, and only if the count is two do we want to add the ratio. So that sort of avoids, like, for example, adding for this gear. And yeah, um, verify that this code works. These two numbers are indeed what we'd expect when running this problem on um, the I hat. So yeah, I think that wraps up um, description for problem three. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below and I'll try my best to get to them. All right, bye.